Here we are, week six of the Quick and Sick Video Diary Sessions. Session, series, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this is what's happened this week. And that's it. That's the end of the vocals. That means two things. First off, we got to put the microphone to bed for the winter. He likes to hibernate. I know he's late in the winter process. Can't even get his, his hood on, but he likes to sleep and he likes to be cosy and warm. But in reality, I have to put a cover on because it stops dust getting in and stops messing up the mic. And then the lyrics, off they go. And there they go, tied it into the folder, ready to go on the shelf. Oh, look, dairy milk. It's me, Coit. Vocals are finished, so I'm going to push this back into place. <laughs> right, now the real fun begins. La 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 la. Yep, he's quite heavy, as I told you before. And then. Look at that. Bit more. There you are. Done! Okay, here's a step which I have to take all the time. Pretty much do this every day. These are all the tracks that technically I've mixed. They're not finalised, but I have mixed them. <coughs> Excuse me, to the best of my ability. That was COVID probably, by the way. So yeah, mixed them to the best of my ability. Created a pre-master track. And then all I do is pretty much listen to all these every single day. And then I have a piece of paper handy, so if I find something like a, a word that's not quite in pitch or not in time or, you know, needs to be pushed to the left a bit, then I'll write that down and go and sort it. If there's volumes that need to be lowered or higher, etc., 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 that's what I'll do. So what I'll do then is I'll just quickly play you a snippet. Why not, eh? Why not? Have she scream. No, actually, no. I'm not going to give you she screams. What should we give you? We'll give you Mad Jimmy's back because we've been working on that. I am a pirate. I kissed a frog once. I love crustaceans. They're in my wine fronts. Mad Jimmy's back. He's under attack. Mad Jimmy's cracked. He's jumping on tacks. And he wants you to know that he is crazy. Right then, so begins the mastering process. So I'm going to master Unlucky Dave. This is the vocal version, so this is what I will do. I save as, and I will save it as a master. Bum, 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 bum. And then I, you have to do that little, that little tune. So what I'm going to do is remove all the working I've done before. And then I'm going to add an audio track. And then I'm going to load in. Uh, unlucky Dave. Right, I should have put that in the other folder, but never mind. Unlucky Dave. Right, so that is my song that should, in theory, be mixed. What I'm going to do now is put on my mastering FX chain. So, I will show you what each of these does. Or each of these do, should I say. So I've got a compressor on here. And this basically takes the sound across the whole waveform and compresses it so that it's not too loud in other parts, not too quiet in others. It basically puts it into a into a way that's not so dynamic. And what I mean by that is it's not really quiet here. And then all of a sudden very loud! Do you know what I mean? Then we go over to some EQ. This is altering the frequencies of the recording. So this particular one here, you can see a drop below the standard zero dB line, which is that one there. All right, that's mean. That's the average or the neutral, whatever you want to call it. So the low ends, I'm just taking a bit off. So I'm cutting a bit here. Then on number three and four, which are this EQ here and this one here, I'm just dropping a little bit in these bands. All right, so that the middle of the sound isn't too muddy. And then on band six, seven, and eight, the high frequencies, I've raised them slightly 
Um, so you get more presence in, especially in the vocals and like hi hats and drums and well, not drums, cymbals and things like that. So the high end frequency sounds are slightly raised. So I'm doing a very, very gentle EQ. Then I do a stereo enhancer. And what this one does is basically takes the track and then makes it wider. So it's sort of like expands it into a room, enhances it stereo wise. <laughs> Hence, stereo enhancer. Um, you'll hear all this stuff in a minute. And then with the last process I do is a maximizer. And what I've done with this one is that I just up it a little so that um, the overall volume is loud, but without clipping. Because when you hear a song like on the radio or whatever, it doesn't come through as your basic mixed volume. It is upped so that it's ace sounding for radio and stuff. So that's what a maximizer would do. Basically compresses and brings it all up to the same sort of level. So I'm going to do this now with this one. You might not be able to hear it actually. Let me see what I'm doing. I have to remember what I'm doing. Do, do, do. Right, that's what I'm doing, is it? Up in the volume? Yeah, I'll take that to point 0.1. What this does is, right, so I've just got my input for this song is on 0 dB. So that's audio 1 there. That's the track, so it's 0 dB. So what is coming in is what's being played. I'm not lowering the volume or increasing the volume on that track. Then, this is the output, the bus 1. So, what I do here is I will lower the volume by 0.1 so that I make sure there's no clipping above zero. Okay? And clipping is whereby something's too loud and it'll make pops or <coughs> distortion sort of sounds and things like that. So, that's my process. And now, all I will do is... I'll play it a bit, actually. You, you might not be able to hear this, so I just want to see if this is working. Oh, you can hear it, can you? Ah, you're hearing it through the mic on my headset. Right, so what I'm doing now is listening and seeing this meter here just to see if it doesn't go above zero. It shouldn't do. So if I go back. Right, that's cool. And I'll just go across, make sure it's not peaking. No, it's not. So then I'll save that, export the bad boy down, and I will save him as Unlucky Dave Master. And then I'll give you a little taste of what it sounds like before and after because i haven't got cubase set up yet so that you can properly hear through the recording that i'm making via obs um it's a bit of a pain in the ass it means i have to play through the speakers into this headset headset mic a bit crap but there you go right so here we are i'll show you my mastered folders these are all the ones i've done so far um let's play where is it? Where is it? Right, okay, so this is the pre version, right? You should be able to hear this. Let me go to a bit. He's fallen in the lane. Unlucky Dave lives in a cave. Give him away. Unlucky Dave. He right, so that's the basic version, the non mastered version. Now I'll do the other one. Should sound completely different. Learn in the lane. Unlucky Dave lives in a cave. Give him away. Unlucky Dave. He has black things for hands and feet. He's the nicest blob you'll ever meet. All right, and there you go. So you should have heard the two differences between the sounds then. Um, the mastered version should sound a lot louder, a lot crisper, um, and separating things slightly so the tracks are, are less muddied than my, my standard mixed version. So and that, that is what I have to do for the mastering. I mean, I am not a mastering professional in any way, shape or form. 
that FX chain that I loaded there, that's as a result of loads of trial and error and watching YouTube videos on mastering to try and work out what to do to improve the end mix. Um, I am not a professional. I'd rather output all this stuff to a professional to do, but I'll be honest, the costs are, are too much. Anyway, there's that, isn't it? Well, what a mightily powerful week this has proven to be, yeah? At the end of six weeks, I have started an album, recorded it, done the vocals, the backing tracks, the production, the mixing, everything, all in six weeks. That's just magical. Mummy says it's magical! Oh. Until next week.